Jared Kedinier versus Kelvin Gastelum. Now, what really happened in this fight? An excellent fight going back and forth a bit where both fighters had their tendencies and patterns. Now, firstly, let's talk about that right hook, man. Kelvin Gastelum gets dropped in this fight. And it wasn't because of anything specifically technical. It was the fact that Jared Kedinier was coming out in this fight with a lot of southpaw jabs, right? When he took the southpaw stance, he was leading a lot of his offense with jabs. And he wasn't really throwing much else. He was intercepting with jabs. He was pressuring with the jab. So he just merely threw out a wing right hook in that third round after two rounds of only southpaw jabs and Kelvin thought it was going to be another one he got conditioned by the jab I don't think it was on purpose from Kenanir and just simply caught Kelvin Gaslam off guard to drop Kelvin with that kind of punch shows the tremendous power that Jared Kenanir has but it also tells you how durable Kelvin Gaslam is man the guy is made out of adamantium or something because his chin just does not make sense at this point he got dropped but then he sprung back to his feet like a Mexican cat, man. It was insane to see that. And it worries me when he goes up and fights these bigger guys like a Jared Kenanier, the hardest striker, hardest puncher of this entire division. And he's taking this level of damage because the size difference was apparent when it came to the takedowns. Jared Kenanier has never been known to be the best wrestler. Now his wrestling has gotten tremendously better, but his defense on some of those takedowns wasn't the most technical based. A lot of it was sheer strength and explosion to get the hips away from Kelvin Gaslam and simply shrug him off. Even when Kelvin got in a deep double leg, when Kenanier exploded for his right straight, Generally, in this type of scenario, the fighter is going to get taken to the ground. They are so unbalanced, but Kelvin could not bring Kenanier's legs and hips closer or away from his backside. That is how explosive and how strong Kenanier is in comparison to Kelvin Gaslam. Kelvin had a perfect double leg takedown timing on that right hand, and he simply just could not get him down. But let's dive into some of the technical moments here because they both change multiple times in this fight. Kenanier in the first round looked really good, technical moving away great footwork while Kelvin Gaslam was gradually finding the timing and finding some of the openings to attack with being a bit trickier as the fight was playing out second round comes along and Kenanier starts to get a bit frustrated he starts to get a bit confused while Kelvin Gaslam is fighting his best fight Kelvin fighting in the second round against Kenanier is one of the best Kelvin Gaslams I have ever seen he was so tricky he was setting things up so perfectly he wasn't swinging out that same combination he throws at everybody right he was mixing things up very well against Kenanier which I will talk about and Kenner becomes a lot more stationary stops moving around starts challenging Kelvin into brawling exchanges and then after the knockdown Kelvin reverts back to his simple ways same combination over and over and over again not changing things up and his trickiness that he had goes out the window whereas Jared Kenanier after talking to his coaches he reverts back to how he was in the first round being a lot more technical using his footwork but without one thing the kicks. Jared Kenanier in the start of the fight was throwing a lot of kicks to the body into the leg, but plenty of those kicks were getting caught by Kelvin and getting Jared off balance. So in the mid rounds, Kenanier abandoned the leg kicks and stuck to his hands more, acting as a sniper for the majority of the fight. Whereas Kelvin Gaslam, he was going for the same sort of thing he goes in every single fight, trying to take the outside foot, right hand setup, big left hand ender. And actually in the fight, he would do this even though Kenanier was switched into southpaw, which takes away that outside foot advantage. And he will still wing it out there as if Kenanier is still in orthodox. But the problem with that is it's very difficult to attack with a looping right hook into a looping left hook combination when your opponent has a long stiff jab right in between you two. That southpaw right hand from Kenanier is ready to check and intercept Kelvin Gaslam at any given moment if he wants to attack in that same sort of manner. And not only that, that Kelvin combination that he goes against everybody with was completely countered by Jared Kenanier the entire fight through a multitude of different techniques. He would shift this escape into a right hook counter so he's in the orthodox stance and as Kelvin chases the outside foot taps the lead hand occupying it for a clear entry he wings that left hook to the body but Kenanier simply shifts backwards he switches stances from orthodox into southpaw that one single step creates enough distance for him to get away from Kelvin's big left hand and as we all know when Kelvin commits with that left he overextends and that opens himself up for a counter shot the reason why Kenanier missed this right hook was he wasn't as confident to lower his defense for the right hook counter. You could see he holds his hands up up until he's sure that Kelvin's left hook passes by. If he was a little bit more confident in this right hook, he would have threw it while shifting backwards and that would 100% have caught Kelvin Gaslam. But this was the very first round when you saw this specific example. Kenanier has not downloaded the data yet. He's an intelligent fighter who attacks after figuring out the opponent's tendencies. But the most effective way Kenanier got away from this combination, when Kelvin wants to chase the outside foot, Kenanier will give it up to him by exiting the outside step space. So as Kelvin moves off to his right, 
to take the outside foot. Cannoneer is moving out to his own right, but backwards. He's acting almost as an inverted mirror. This angle and distance gives Cannoneer a window on Kelvin's chin, if Kelvin commits with that left hand of his, which he did many times in the fight. This angle that Cannoneer exits on can be a bit scary because he's actually moving toward the direction that the left hand is coming at him. But the important thing here is the distance. Cannoneer was very confident and sure of himself that he can create that distance like this and get away from any potential left hand from Kelvin Gaslam. Kelvin, because he's so used to throwing this combo on everybody, he's so confident in that punch of his. When he wings it out there, he overextends and that gives a big opening for Jared Cannoneer's right hand. I mean, his overextension is so bad. Sometimes you can count an entire second to time a counter punch on him. I mean, half a second is long enough, let alone an entire second. For an example, in the fourth round, when he swung that left hand of his, Cannoneer had literally an entire second to catch him with an uppercut, which potentially makes Kelvin Gaslam one of the easier guys to counter if you are timing his left hand specifically. And that's what Cannoneer looked to do the entire fight. It looked like that was a big part of his game plan. This is a huge difference from Cannoneer's previous fights. He's usually a very static, stationary fighter who just plods around the cage. He wants the opponent to come at him, he snipes him down with his tremendous power, doesn't really move anywhere in the cage. In this fight specifically, even though his precision and his awareness was stellar in this fight, honestly it was his footwork that impressed me more than anything else. And this is the very first thing to happen in this fight is pretty much what set the fight in motion. When Kelvin moved in and start angling off to his right, Kenanir think he was going to be the first left hand combination, he takes off that angle and looks for his right hand opening. Now the opening for the right hand could be devastating if he times it perfectly, but rarely was he able to get that timing down on Kelvin Gaslam the entire fight. One time he landed his jab before throwing the right hand and both his techniques were able to land. But when he's winging out the right hand from a distance like that, he tends to telegraph it a little bit too much, wind up on it too much a little bit too desperate for that knockout blow instead of just letting it happen. This is why you saw many of those right hands miss as Kelvin overextended on his left hand, but you know that Kananir got the perfect angle. If he just sets them all up off of his jab first, pops out the jab at Kelvin, the right hand is going to be there. And it's a sure thing for him because when you jab someone, they're automatically in the distance for you to connect with a full on right cross. There was one good adjustment though that Kelvin made when this initially happened to him in this fight. When he chased the outside foot, he knows that Kananir was moving out into his own back right angle. Kelvin knew that he can't touch Kananir's head with his left. So if he just gives him that look, that he's going to go in for that combo combination going for the kill he knows that the last thing to move in this sort of footwork is the lead leg of Kananir so he would faint like he's going to step up far to the outside foot but instead of going to the head with his left he attacks the leg instead and I wish he went to this a lot more in the fight you'll see a pattern about Kevin Gaslam not only in this fight in his entire career he doesn't make the highest fight IQ decisions even though he has something down he has a timing down somewhere he has a tendency down somewhere or he found an opening on the opponent he tends to stop going for it after they've gone through a couple rounds right Kelvin Gaslam is usually the trickiest in the first two rounds afterward he starts to go to a lot more of his simple techniques his simple combinations and it's almost like he forgot what he found out about his opponent right so Kelvin stopped going to this he stopped going to his high feint low kick to create an imbalance for his hands to follow up afterward if he specifically went to this the entire fight, he would have so much success in this. He would have landed that left hand so many times in the fight. Also, ending his combinations with the leg kick so he doesn't allow Kananir to get away and counter without anything coming his way. Ending the combinations off with a leg kick causes more distance in between him and Kananir. Also, it gives Kananir something to think about after the hands are thrown. Or feinting forward for an opening from Kananir in order to go in for a takedown. This feint has also opened many more things in that second round that he simply stopped going to for the rest of the fight. All of these things Kelvin has threw out the window when that third, fourth, and fifth round came and he started going to his simple combinations, simple movements yet again. Those techniques in the second round started to trick and confuse Jared Cannonier. At this point, we were so used to seeing Cannonier move away, use his footwork to escape the outside foot angle every single time he did it. But after Kelvin fainted up high when he took the outside foot, he landed the light kick yet again, getting the better of Cannonier when Cannonier thought he took off the right angle and did the right thing. Then right afterward, Kelvin very confident he goes and checks the left guard and the right guard but this time does not throw anything and you can see Kenanir had a puzzled look on his face right after this happened immediately after this Kenanir walks forward into Kelvin Gaslam and Kelvin takes off the outside foot this time no setup 
no right hand to measure it, no masking, no feint, nothing. He wings out a left hand, and Kettinger just sat in front of him, did not move his hands, did not move his head, did not move his feet, and he took a left hand to the head. A few seconds later, Kettinger starts marching down at Kelvin Gaslam, very similar to how he used to do, and he sees Kelvin yet again with a huge telegraph, even more of a telegraph left hand. He tries to contest it, challenges Kelvin in this exchange by winging out a left hook instead of being defensive, and he eats that left hand to the head. He marches forward yet again, again, guard up high, no footwork, very stationary, this time in the southpaw stance, but Kelvin attacks his southpaw opponents the same way he attacks his orthodox opponents, winging right hook into a winging left overhand, and yet again, Kettinger does not move, he challenges Kelvin there again, goes for another big right hook, and eats one square to the jaw, and this continuously was happening throughout that entire second round where Kettinger's style completely changed, he became much more of a heavy pressure power puncher instead of picking his shots, moving away, using that footwork that he used to win that first round. What you saw in the corner between the second and third round changed Jarek Hennanier. His coaches started to tell him, you gotta move, man. When you're moving, he doesn't deal well with you. He's trying to bring you to a firefight trade with him, and that's what you're doing. And then after getting off the stool, you see Kennedy doing his breathing exercise. He's a guy who believes in energy and all that sort of stuff, so he's trying to calm himself down. This showed to me that he started to get frustrated in that second round when Kelvin was showing him all those different kind of looks, and Kennedy reverted back to how he was in that first round. He started to yet again move away from that outside foot and he looked like the same focus fighter that he was previously and then eventually Kennedy was able to catch him with that right hook of his and this moment threw the fight into something completely different it may have been the contributing factor as to why Gaslam started reverting back to his usual tendencies instead of being the tricky fighter that he was in the second round and Kennedy started to exploit the holes that Gaslam had such as first starting off with a southpaw lead left this usually is to get the opponent to pull back away from your power hand so you can extend extend into a follow-up full step right hand, whether it be a right uppercut or a right hook. It's very similar to the way that Francis Ngannou dropped Stipe Miocic. But Kelvin blocked. He guarded up on that left. Kenner used that left hand of his to find the opening. He bings him with a right uppercut up the center, and Kenner start to look a lot sharper. Is it because Kelvin went back to his simple ways and stopped being as tricky? Perhaps, and that may have allowed Kenner to pick out more openings as the fight carried on. But if that is the case, it all stemmed from the knockdown that Kenner got on him. Kenner later found that Gaslam likes to pull and duck as his defense. He likes to pull away from jabs and then duck under your power hand. So to set up this same kind of angle for himself, he would pump out jabs from a distance and instead of throwing the right, he comes in with an elbow as Gaslam is looking to duck and this intercepts the head movement. And that is the end of the breakdown, guys. Great performance by Chair Kennanier. Good effort, especially in that second round for Kelvin Gastelum. One of the best rounds I've ever seen Kelvin fight in. Does Jared Kennanier deserve the next title shot? I know Darren Till is fighting Derek Brunson, so I would like to say the winner of that goes up against Jared Kennanier, and then that winner should be the next in line for a title shot because Adesanya and Whitaker are not going to fight for a long time, man. Adesanya says most likely by next year. That gives you a lot of time for the next number one contender to immerse. So I can't wait to see that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.